everyone, welcome back to Rachel and Bella Crafts. Rachel here. So I hope you're all well today. Um, so if you watched yesterday's video, you'll see that I um, managed to taper down my um, my signatures. I, I had overstuffed them slightly. Well, it wasn't I overstuffed them. I think I just put too many pages in in the first place. But um, I've cut them both down now. Um, and I'm really happy with um, the content and what's in there. Um, they are now both in on the... Um, binding so they're both uh, in on the um elastic that's the word i'm looking for they're both in on the elastic um and mostly are finished inside so i'm gonna have a little look at that in a second but um what i wanted to do today now is to make a closure for it so i wanted to do something a little bit different with this journal um just because i don't know it's i really enjoyed making it and it, it's quite unique to uh, the kind of things I normally do. Um, so I thought, well, you know, let's try something a little bit of a different <clears throat> closure, different design for me, obviously. I'm sure lots of other people have tried this uh, technique before. So what I've come up with is, um, I've got some very lovely uh, vintage fabric here. This is from, I'm not quite sure, I think it's from a large cloth, but it's, it's lovely and it's faded and it's just the right color um, to go with all the different blues on the front of my journal and the back. So I'm going to use this um, as a closure, well, the binding thing, but I um, obviously need to find a way to do it up. So what I've come up with is this. Now, I hope this works because obviously I haven't done it yet. So I'm, I'm thinking something along the lines of, um, I've got a doily here. And I'm going to use the doily as part of the closure. And then I'm going to thread my material through the doily. And then I'm going to use um, some quilting, a little bit of blue quilt. And I got this lovely brooch. So I'm going to mount that then on top of the piece of quilt. So I have a piece of quilt here that I've already stitched. So I wanted to put that on there like that, but I've, I've stitched around the edge in, and then I'm gonna put that onto the top there then, just like so. But I'm wondering if I need to stitch the quilt to the doily first. I don't know, but we're gonna give it a go and we'll see how we get on. So I'm gonna just pop this onto the quilting. Oop, so it's ready. I'm gonna have to excuse me more fingers and thumbs today. Um, so, is that the center there? Maybe. I'll do it there. That's it. Lovely. So that's going to sit there like that. And then what I'm going to try and do now is thread material through underneath. So if I just move that out of the way a second. So I've taken um, a bit of fabric and I'm folding it over again just so that it'll thread. And I want this to go behind. And then it's going to come back out. Um, through the opposite hole. So, okay, that's gone smooth enough so far. Yep, I like the look of that. Like I say, it's something a little bit different. And it'll just kind of keep everything neat and tidy inside. And I didn't want to, um, I like the, the fabric closure to be wide here. So I'm not worried about it. I'm not going to stitch it in half or anything like that. Um, so I'm thinking then I can just simply tie it as such. That will then hang over the top and then this will fit quite nicely by there. How do you think that looks? I, I quite like that. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm digging that. Okay, so I'm just going to take this off so I can stitch this into place. And I'm wondering if it might be an idea to do that by hand. Although that being said, if I do it by hand, Oh, it might not stay on. So now I just need to fix, and I'm only going to fix these two corners here because obviously if whoever um, purchases the journal wants to change the uh, binding on it, then they can simply slide that out from behind or they don't want to take this off. You know, it's entirely up to them then. But I'm just thinking if I just fix the top and the bottom there, just needs a little bit of flexibility then, doesn't it? So I'm just going to move over to the sewing machine and do that, and I will be back. Mm -hmm. There we go. So that's all done. I'm just going to cut off 
any little bits of thread that we've got hanging loose here because we want them in the way. <clears throat> Excuse me. Here we go. And those bits are a bit frayed. Bring that round to the back, like so, and then you should be able to then simply. Oh, sorry, that's a really good view for you, isn't it? Of my forearm. <laughs> good job I looked up then. Good job I've got hairy forearm, didn't I? It wouldn't have been a very particularly nice view. No. There we go. We pop a little, just a little nut in that. <clears throat> All right, let's have a little look now, straighten that up a bit, see what we think of that. Oh, I quite like that. I think it's a bit different. I think it finishes off the journal nicely. I think it's got a little bit of class with our lovely clasp. She's rather pretty, isn't she? And um, I really like this fabric. And the bonus of it is on the back where we've got items in the pocket it'll kind of just keep all of that in place there as well so yeah I'm happy with that okay so now that we've done the closure because I'm terrible with my closures if I don't do it now I'll just move on and then forget and then it's like oh I won't bother with the closure so that's done so now I just want to go to the inside and just double check um that everything else is done because <clears throat> I think there may be one or two little things I just need to add on or double check okie dokie so we've got our little um little writing spot in the front here which i'm not going to uh, put anything in um i'm gonna leave that for whoever purchases the journal they may want to pop photos in there or what have you that's entirely up to them then so yeah that's all done there on the front and then inside then we've got um a lovely tag inside of the pocket and then here I've got, um, I was really pleased actually with this cluster. This is literally just all scrap fabric and a button. And I just uh, hand stitched it all together um, and then popped it on there. I just think that's really effective. Sorry, I know I'm picking these shit bits of thread everywhere. Um, I put in one of these uh, vintage um, postcard images. And then this is a beautiful image out of um, a book that I showed you at the beginning. The series when I was first started doing it, the Welsh book. Um, so we got a dictionary page here, which is in English. So I was just trying to read it then. Um, here, then I popped one of these little pockets on that we made. I'm sure I did a tutorial on this. Do you know what? It's been such a busy month, I can't even remember. And then we got a lovely tag in there, the spat, and look at my groovy coffee dye paper. I'm really pleased with that, or tea dye it is actually. And then I've just secured the pocket then onto the page with um, some fabric because I thought that would be a bit different. Um, we put a little bit of a little prompt, word prompt in there. So this is some paper out of um, typewriting tutor book kind of thing. Um, and I just folded it in with uh, to make little tuck spots because again, I wanted to be able to put these lovely photographs in. Um, and I then just stitched onto the top uh, tuck with lots of fabric scraps um, just to add a little bit of interest and texture. Um, it's obviously one of the pages out of the kit and I've just stitched some of this beautiful vintage lace onto it. Um, this is a kit page. I can't quite remember the name of the kit but I will put this in the description. Um, Okay, so this page here is from Liana's scrap um, on Etsy. Um, this is the uh, lace kit that she did. It's absolutely beautiful. I, um, if you've seen some of uh, Bella's videos, you'll see she's used that in there as well. Um, this is just a page that I'd, um, I'd used a napkin on there and then I embossed it. Um, I was really quite pleased with how that came out, actually. <coughs> Sorry. 
Um, I've popped some more of those lovely photographs in there. I mean, these pictures are so cute. Look at that there. They're just so lovely. I'd love to tell you who they are, but <clears throat> I couldn't read the book because it was written in Welsh. And to my shame, sadly, I can't speak Welsh. Um, here's a ledger page here from um, a ledger book that um, Mum and I have. Um, with all, uh, obviously, you know, stuff written on there, obviously. Um, another scrap uh, fabric piece. And I've simply just taken some lace and folded that then and just <clears throat> stitch over it. I just think it adds a little bit of interest, but it also then leaves you the nice writing page here. Um, this is one of the pages from the kit, but I've actually printed this onto vellum. Um, this is a lovely tea dyed page from that book, um, and it's all in Welsh. So I just thought that was quite nice. Uh, the book is all about the lady's family and her, her history, so <clears throat> if you were able to read any of that, brilliant. Um, and I've just done a little fabric scrappy thing at the top there. Um, this is another page on the kit. And I've coffee dyed the back of that, I think. Or tea dyed the back of that. And then I did this lovely fabric ruffle. Um, you guys made this pocket with me in one of the um, tutorials I did recently. And obviously we've uh, popped little bits and pieces in there then out of the kit. Um, and then there's another picture then from that book. Um, and just some bits and pieces in there. So when I've stuck it to the page, I've obviously, because it's a full pocket, we've got our tag then inside of the pocket. Um, but <clears throat> I've also stuck it down so that we've also then got a tuck spot here as well. So that there is a journaling card from the kit. Um, and I haven't put anything on it because obviously this pocket is quite tight. So it was more importantly felt to have the writing space underneath. Right, so this is something here that I have to finish. So I just wanted to tape this. Now this, I haven't tried using this yet. This is some um, from Tim Holtz. It is fabric tape. So I had this as part of a Wednesday wish from my Amazon wish list. Um, and I just thought I might try a little bit of that just to um, adhere the photograph to the page. If I just take that bit off there in a minute, let's just see how this works. Because oh, under this lovely, beautiful fabric flip, this is a really cute photo and I just wanted a little bit of tape here and here just to keep it in place. So um, let me just add a bit of ink on there. Don't have any white edges, do we? No. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. Right, let's see if I can try and get this. Oh, hang on, let me just cut it in half a second because it's a little bit wide for what I want. And it may actually be a bit long. So if I just take that bit off there. <clears throat> right, now let's see if I can get the backing off. Ooh. Yep, there she goes. Okay, and you know me, I'm always all fingers and thumbs, so that can't be that difficult. I just want to double check now where the photograph lies. That's fine. And I'm going to just add a little bit there. And then a little bit on the bottom bit. So let me just cut that piece there as well. <clears throat> and then I'm just going to try and get this off here. So I apologise for the coffin. I had some uh, a vegetable soup for my lunch and I inhaled as I had a pee go down and it was caught in my throat for a moment and it was a bit scary. <laughs> so anything in it when you're hungry on your own and you choke on something you're like, ah, I was going to bash my back. But it's just aggravating my throat a bit now, so. Ah, come on. Oh, here we go. Right, sorry about that. I imagine that's pretty painful watching. Okay, got that now. Here we go. And we're just going to tape that across there. Oh, I quite like that. That looks quite cool, doesn't it? And then we'll just tuck those little ladies behind there. There we go. Okay, so on this page then, this is the back of that uh, coffee dye, oh, it's not coffee, it's tea, dyed page. Um, and if you watch the tutorials, you'll have seen me make this recently, which obviously is our little flip down pockets. You've got a nice writing spot there. And then you've got, um, these pockets then which are filled with all lots of lovely vintage ephemera for you. 
um, or if you want to um, embellish other pages with them, you've got you know little stamps and extra bits and pieces like that in there then as well. So I'm not going to stick that one in. I'm going to leave that there. So you can take it out, write on it, and pop it back. Um, then I just made this little cluster pocket here with a little bit of scrappy lace left over. Oh, that's um, linen behind there. And we've got some more of these lovely photographs from the book. So I'm going to just pop those there into that pocket. Here we go. Um, some more of the vellum page, another nice writing page. And I've just added a bit of uh, interesting stitching on there. Um, just so it just, you know, gives it a bit of interest, doesn't it? Um, that's the back of that uh, one page. And I've left that on there because there's a stamp on there from the college where the book came from. I didn't take it from there, by the way. That college has been shut many, many years. <laughs> I've got to hazard a guess that I think my dad probably did a bit of a clearance on the place. And uh, so we ended up with some books. But anyway, that's the back of that lovely lace page. These are just stunning, These that lace kit. Um, and then on this side then, I have done a vintagey, scrappy um, fabric flip. I do apologise, I just seem to have loads of thread everywhere. And I don't know why. There we go. It's probably from sewing at three in the morning and not being able to see <laughs> all my loose threads. But there we go. So I've stitched that on there. So it's not actually attach, attach, but it is. So if you wanted to try and tuck something up behind there, you could. Or if you just want to leave it like that, you can. Um, and then obviously you've got a lovely uh, writing spot then behind there. Um, this is the other side of that typing page. I did another scrappy fabric cluster on the end there and you've got um, obviously pockets here which I just pop these pictures in so you can see. Um, there we go. Um, this is out of the kit as well. When I say out of the kit I am of course referring to um, Shades of the Past kit that we recently did. Um, I've got the thing here if I can catch hold of that a second. Right here we go. Right, this is the kit that I've used in this journal. Sorry, I should have said that at the beginning. Right, so this page here is out of the kit and um, I've just embossed it. And um, I've stitched some fabric bits at the top and onto the page and then that's made a nice little flippy flip. Oh, there's a lovely photograph under there of a rather old looking family, which is rather nice. So there you go, that there then. And then you've got those little tabs then on this side as well, which I just thought looked quite cute. So I've left those there. Um, I made this um, in a tutorial with you all. Uh, this has got the um, little pockets in. Oh, here we go. And again, you've got lots and lots of uh, bits of ephemera in here. So there's a little lace pocket, a little bit of lace on there and some fabric. And again, down here. So I enjoyed that. That was quite a nice little project to do. Um, and I think one of these, oh, on the back then, is a, is a little t pocket as well with a tag, which is all ready for you to write on. So there's lots of hidden, um, hidden journaling, journaling space within that. There we go. That's rather natty. Let's pop that on there. There we go. All right, and then that's the back of the dictionary page. And then I've used one of our vintage checks, which I've embossed. I just simply stitched it to the page and I've uh, also stitched a fabric pocket onto the front of it. And I've just made my own little bit of a lace cluster. And then in here, then I've got a printed, uh, this is the, was the back of a um, postcard, the writing on a postcard. And I've just done a bit of stitching. I've taken one of the photographs out of the book and I've stitched and I've stitched some scrap um, lace on there and one of the kit pages as well. And of course the postcard was embossed. So I just thought that looked quite interesting. Um, these are also out of the kit. So again, lots of space to write in, put little notes. And then this is the back then of that other page with that lovely um, lace all around. I've left this little bit here to make a tiny tuck spot there. So that's that signature. And then this one here, let me just take this off here a second. So this is a hand stitched um, fabric flip and I've just stitched some lovely um, vintage lace over the top of that as well. This is vintage fabric and this is vintage fabric as well. So there you go, you've got again, nice journaling space there. I've just left the paper clip on here 
so that it doesn't um, slide down and get creased because that would be a shame and you can't very well iron it in there can you so I just thought it was easy to do that um I also left that flap on there as well so if you wanted to tuck something up behind there um you can um this is a double pocket that I made from a sheet of coffee day paper um and all I've done then is add some scrappy pockets to the inside of it and again there's some lovely hearts on the kit and um, inside of there then I've put Oh, I have some bits and pieces in Boston. and I've stuck a lovely photograph on the back. Um, because he looks like he's somebody's sweetheart, so he's going in there, keep him nice and safe. And then I've used some of this um, washi, which I thought looked quite cool, and I've just gone over the edges with it, and I've stitched across there as well with a funky stitch. And then I've used some more of that Welsh um, book page, which I've embossed, and then I've just made a scrappy pocket with that. And then we've put these two lovely little girls in there and um, some ephemera as well. So that looks rather cute. Nice bit of writing space, a bit of vintage fabric there. And I've stitched that into place. Um, again, some more of the book. Um, this here is one of the faux ephemeras that I did from the faux ephemera um, video. And that's been printed onto that newsprint paper, so it really does feel like the real deal. Um, there's a vintage doily in there. Again, it's not sewn in, so should you want to remove that, you can, if you wanted to use it for something else. Another one of the Welsh book pages, and I've just added some stitching. This is a beautiful journaling card from the kit, isn't she pretty? And I think she goes quite nicely with the book page. So I've just made a, a lace um, tuck spot there. Sorry, let me just cut that off. And then on the other side, oh, we've got another one of these writing spots. So again, I haven't stuck this one in either, so you can take it out, write in it. You've got loads and loads of um, ephemera and embellishments in here. Um, and then a nice spot to write on, there. So you can just pop that back up there. And there we go. Um, here is another page from the kit, or well, it's a, a piece of ephemera from the kit which is some writing from 1784, there's a date on there. That's a nice little journaling card. And then on the other side, then we've got another one of these pockets. Again, lots of ephemera. I've put loads and loads of ephemera in here for you. Um, so it's gonna be lots of space for you to write. And then there's another tag there in that pocket. And I have take, left this pocket so that you can take it out. So you can do whatever you want with it. You can put it wherever you want. Um, and if you wanted to journal on the back, you could. Um, but that just sits there quite nicely. Um, music page with some lace stitched around. And then here, then we've got... Um, oh, this is the page I haven't finished. Ha! I was just thinking then, why haven't I done this page? Right, so I've got to now um, stitch this pocket onto this page here. Because this again is stuffed full with um, ephemera for you. And you've got one of those lovely tags there that we did with uh, Roxy's Weekly Challenge. And then um, I just collaged then using pages out of the kit to make these um, little pockets. And then of course I put those little hearts then that are also in the kit on the front to make mini pockets. So you've got little bits of ephemera and what have you then behind there as well. So I really like that. So I will have that stack on. Um, well, she's ready to go and then on this side we've got another vintage fabric flip so this one has got um, a few layers we've got this lovely lace on the top here and then we've got this bit of lace here and then obviously you've got all that space then under there so you can collage on that page if you want to or write on that page whatever you want to do so that's that bit there and then on this side We've got another one of our vintage checks. This is one of the ones that I made in the um, tutorial on the checks, and this is a floating pocket. So you can take this out, float it, move it around, <laughs> do whatever you need to do with it. Uh, you can put it anyway, basically. It's not fixed to the page. And there we are, it's um, another um, letter there out of the ephemera from the kit, which is a letter there from 1953. Uh, that's the other side of the book page and I've just wrapped some of the ephemera around the end just to um, 
add a little bit of interest there and just stitch those on. Um, this was another type of floating pocket that I did with you guys in a tutorial um, and I made it with fabric and again it's um, ephemera in there and of course we've stamped under here and then behind you then is another piece of um, ledger page for you. So there's quite a few bits and pieces in here of um, original vintage ephemera. Uh, plus then obviously lots of um, replicas as well. So this being a double pocket, obviously you've got the same on the other side. You've got that lovely photograph there, that little girl. And one of the little tags. And then in the, here we've got a dirty, dirty pocket with some tiny, tiny little bits of ephemera there, also from the kit. Because um, don't forget, when you're printing out kits with ephemera um, and you've got things like this in there, depending on how big or how small you print the kit, you can make these things bigger and smaller yourself. I'm sure you guys knew that anyway, didn't need to tell you that, but just thought I'd mention it. So you may see certain things in here that are in different sizes, and that's just because I've printed them out either half size or full size or what have you. Um, then on this side, I've got another little tack spot that I've just added a bit of lace on. Um, I didn't have a full piece left, but I really like that, so I wanted to pop that there. And then this then is an index card that's been tea dyed and embossed, and I've made a little fabric flip to go on top of that as well. So you can have little hidden journaling spots under there and then pop it away. Um, another book page with some more fabric. That's the back of the doily. You can write on the back of this if you wanted to. That's that faux um, invoice. Um, Oh, that's not meant to be in there. This then is another one of the vintage checks that we made. Um, and inside then you've got these lovely scraps and a little bit of fabric under there. So just a nice little journaling spot. Um, and that does just flip over the page. And I do think I was meant to have put a paper clip. Ah, my son has taken it upon himself to keep on playing with my paper clips. He's bending them out of shape, which is not very good. And I'm like, please don't do that because I need those. And then I couldn't find one then earlier. So there we are, that needs to go on there. That's a little um, uh, glassine bag. And um, we've used um, a check on the front of there. Made a little flip, look at that, isn't that cool? So you've got a writing spot there as well. But there is a nice big pocket in the back of there too. Uh, again, I'm not going to stick that down. I don't want to make things too permanent in here in case you want to do things differently. You may not even want to leave some of the ephemera in. You may want to take it out and put your own things in. So that's why I try to, where I can, just place things um, to leave you with the choice. Oh my goodness, I can't believe how many threads I've got on you. Sorry, this is so annoying, I know. Um, this is the other half of that uh, large pocket that I showed you. And then in here we've got some little, more little photos from... That's uh, that lovely book. And then behind here, again, another little pocket made with the embossed book page. And we've got some more nice photographs in there as well. And then this then is a pocket that I made from fabric and uh, some embroidered linen. Um, and it's a, a, a double layered pocket. So we've got a nice photograph in here and then there's space in the back there then um, for a tag and then on the very last page those of you that watched my purge of my um, signatures yesterday will notice I had to take one of my pages out and I was like oh I don't want to leave that out so what I did was I turned it into this rather marvellous envelope I'm really pleased with this envelope I was almost like oh I don't want to put that in there quite like that I want to keep it but no it's got to go with the journal so all I did was I took the collage page from the Shades from the Past kit and I've folded it to make an envelope, a really easy envelope. Um, so I've gone up obviously so far and then I've folded down for a flap. And then I've used different fabrics and laces and I've stitched, but I obviously did all the stitch into this when it was all just one big sheet. Because if I'd been stitching here and there, there'd be no, whereas actually you've got a really nice big, oh, and there's something in there. Look at that. Bit more vintage ephemera for you. There we go. I said I have another ledger book. Cricket salt scores. There we go. So I've popped that in as well. So you've got that in there. And then on here, then I've made uh, there's some of that lovely blue vintage fabric underneath. I've stitched around that. 
And then I've taken some pieces from um, the tablecloth that this came from and the fabric that's on the front of the journal. And I made a little flower shape and I've stitched a button on there. And then here you've got lace running across there. And then on the top, we've got some different scraps of lace and there's fabric underneath and there's a bit more fabric there. And then we've stitched these, um, these buttons into place as well. So I really like that. I think that's quite marvellous. And it's very pretty, the colours. So that just clips on there. And you can keep whatever you want in there then. I just saw that kind of finished it off rather nicely. And then you've got the back page then again, which has got some of this lovely Tim Holtz um, card on there from the vintage um, vintage set. Now I know it's still a little bit gate and mouth, but this is nothing compared to what it would have been if I hadn't taken that other stuff out and just like stopped when I did, because I could have just kept going forever with this journal. I love this journal, really love it. I'm so pleased with it. Oh, and in the back, of course, you've got your lace pocket. And then I've got this lovely picture here of her with her friends. And then this tag, which I love, because you've got the embossing on there, and it's really lovely. And then there's some more vintage ephemera here. So this is some of the stuff that I made in the tutorial. Um, and that will come with the journal as well. So there we go. My Shades from the Past journal. I'm not quite sure what we're going to call her yet. Um, and she will be going into our Etsy shop shortly. Oh, this I wanted to put in as well. This is a beautiful, um, beautiful postcard. Um, and it was sent to somebody in Washington in 1953. And I just loved it. I love the bridge on there and I love the blues on there. So I'm going to find some way to pop that in here. And that will come with the journal as well. So you're getting quite a bit of um, vintage ephemera there as well. So all those threads I just picked off. Look, I've gone and just <sighs> gone all over my, all my closure. Dear me, I don't know. Right, so let's just wrap this around. And hopefully, if all goes to plan, she will do it rather nicely. Because I don't think I added anything extra in there then, did I? No. There we go. So that's her done there. Super. I tried to think what the postage will be on it, but she's lovely. So she's more than welcome to sit on my bookcase for the time being until um, until she finds her way to a forever home. So I hope you enjoyed um, following along with me while I made this journal. Um, if you did have any questions or any comments, if you'd like to leave in the comments box below, you know we're always really, really grateful. Um, Oh my goodness, I forgot to mention at the end of the video as well. I am so sorry. My first thing I should have said was a huge, huge, massive thank you. Um, because yesterday we reached our 3,000 subscribers. Yay! Which is very exciting. And um, we are really, really grateful for all your support and um, friendship, your comments, and you guys just, just being there consistently. So um, just wanted to say a massive thank you to you all for that. Um, also, we are planning something to celebrate because um, we can't let um, the occasion go by without doing something. So keep your eyes out. I will be putting out some posts later this week um, about what we're going to be doing to celebrate the 3000 subscribers. So I hope you all have a great day and uh, we'll be back with you all very soon. Take care now.